everybody and welcome to this episode of Scripture Snippets. Tonight we're going to continue our study into the book of Revelation. Uh, the last episode we ended with talking about Revelation uh, 7. We talked about the 144,000 that were sealed and we learned that those 144,000 were of the Jewish nation. They were going to be evangelists going out into the world and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. There was this pause here during this great time of turmoil during the opening of the seals. God in his mercy and his grace is trying to extend the salvation message to the world still. He has given up on his nation and he's still reaching out to them. We see that not only the 144,000 are mentioned here, but it says that a multitude of Gentiles, those who are not of the Jewish nation, uh, that you can't even number, are saved. So we need to know during this time of tribulation and during this time of uh, in the Revelation, when God's wrath is being poured out, we must understand that God's mercy and grace continues to be poured out as well. We usually have a tendency to look at the book as doom and gloom, and a lot of it is. A lot of it is the judgment of God. We have to understand that he's a just God, and he has to keep his promises and exercise his judgment on the world. This is the fulfillment of the promise that we read. But we have to understand, especially as we go into these next uh, set of chapters, that we have a loving God. He is love. And that even in these horrible things that are happening, His love, His grace, His mercy is still evident. So if you will, open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 8, and we'll begin in verse 1. And it begins... When he opened the seventh seal, we got to remember this is Christ, only he is worthy to open. So when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Uh, There was silence because they knew what was about to come. They knew that further judgment was coming. Verse 2, And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. We see two sets of seven here. We see seven angels, and we see seven trumpets. What is this repeated uh, use of sevens? Well, sevens in the Bible always represents completion and perfection. It took seven days. Well, God used seven days. He could have literally created everything in one, but he used seven. He used seven to show us a sign that seven is a sign of a completion and perfection. So God here is perfectly executing judgment. And when Christ breaks the seal, there are seven angels who stand before God himself and they were given seven trumpets. When judgments were given, trumpets were blown. So we see this here, and we see another set of judgments about to come. So the seventh seal actually opens up seven more judgments, and it's the seven trumpets. Verse 3, Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. So we have an angel here that has this golden bowl, this golden censer. And it was smoking, offering up incense to God. But what that was representing was the prayers of all the martyred saints. All those who had prayed, who had been persecuted, and they had prayed prayed for vengeance. They prayed for God to rescue them, but they also prayed for God to do justice. And we're about to see the answer to that prayer. Verse 5, 
Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So fire, fire which completely cleanses, but yet also completely destroys, is cast from the altar of God. Again, a judgment. We see it here, and it comes upon the earth. And that is basically just the preamble, saying this is about to come, and then these seven angels are going to step up, as we see in verse 6. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now don't skip that verse. It's not just a get ready verse. Notice what it said. The seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves. I wonder what these angels are going to have to do to prepare themselves. Not just for the action of the blowing of the trumpet, but for their minds, for what they know is about to happen. They're going to have to prepare themselves, set themselves down, get ready to do this. This is a harsh thing that's about to happen, and they have to prepare themselves to do it. Verse 7. The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. So we see here in the first trumpet judgment that hail mingled with fire and blood came down on the earth. Does that seem familiar? If you go back into the judgments upon Exodus, the plagues that God gave uh, to Pharaoh, that was one of the plagues. Hail mingled with fire. This is intense, though, because we have hail and fire mingled with blood. And this is going to wreak other devastation, especially upon the vegetation of the earth. A third of the trees are going to burn up. So we know what's going to happen with that. Uh, we're going to have oxygen depletion. There's going to be that filtration that the trees give us is going to be gone. They're going to be burned up a third. And that's going to devastate the environment of the earth very drastically. And all green grass was burned up. So we're going to start seeing things just like the Dust Bowl in, uh, I think it was the 1920s and 1930s, when the plains, they had over-farmed, and they just had dirt fields. And when wind and storms and the natural wind cycle would come through, started throwing dirt into the air. And we're going to see the same thing here, because once this first trumpet sounds and this judgment happens, it says all green grass was burned up. Now this is going to affect not just that, but how about the animals? Things like cattle, uh, those animals that feed primarily on grass, insects who make their homes, this is going to have a devastating, devastating effect upon the earth. Verse number 8 here, the second trumpet. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And it says here in verse 8, if you see, it says something like a great mountain burning with fire. I believe this to be a meteorite or an asteroid even. Uh, more than likely, I think it is going to be like an asteroid. Uh, we have many of them that actually pass the Earth every day, but they're relatively far, so we don't feel the effects 
all what it would take is one command from the Almighty God, and those can be steered to an impact upon us. And we can notice here in verse 8, it says that this asteroid, this great mountain burning with fire, was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And why would it become blood? Well, think about all the life that is in a seabed. And if you have something like an asteroid or an astrological event that it's hitting at here, just smash into the ocean, you're going to have water displacement, you're going to have a huge devastation on the seafloor, you're going to have those living animals that are there just die and be crushed, and you're going to have blood flow everywhere. And you've got to understand, too, that this is going to affect the ships, just as we find out in verse 9. It says, And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. So we're going to have the loss of human life here. And that's going to add to it as well. It mentions the ships, but of course we should know those ships are going to have sailors on them. They're going to have passengers on them. But the bulk of ships today are actually freight ships, freight liners. So we know there's going to be great devastation there, even in the commerce of the world. You know, some people may say, well, it's just boats. How in the world is that going to rocket? Well, we should have learned our lesson here recently, shouldn't we? With uh, COVID and the shutdowns at the docks, we still have a backlog at many of the docks here in the United States and the harbors. We have ships that have been setting out at sea for literal months that have not been able to get their freight off. And that was just because of a simple and temporary shutdown. So think about what happens when a third uh, of the ships are destroyed. A third of the regular attending ships that are out sea are destroyed. It's going to be devastating. So we're going to see a lot of environmental devastation. We're going to see financial devastation in the world economy. And we're going to see uh, emotional devastation because all of this is going to adjust how people live. If we think COVID was bad, it's nothing compared to what we see here during the Trump judgments. So we have great devastation here, and we're only on the second trumpet. So that's devastating. So what's this telling us? We need to be prepared. If you haven't taken the message in the gospel of Christ seriously, if you haven't looked at it and prayed and considered it and thought of it in your heart and answered the call of God, if he's calling unto you to repent and you haven't answered that call and accepted the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, You need to understand that you're going to suffer. That you'll die and go to hell if if this doesn't if the rapture doesn't occur before. But if the rapture does occur, you're going to be left behind, and you may very well suffer these things. And to the Christian who has accepted Christ, you have to understand that this should motivate us to share the gospel even more because this should break our hearts it shouldn't fear us it shouldn't bring us into this uh, sudden fear that cripples us or this sudden fear where we can't live with it instead it should motivate us to share the gospel and then verse 10 Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. So again, we see something again, like another asteroid, a falling star, something like that that's going to crash upon the earth. And that's more than likely 
because if we had won it during the second trumpet, it would have affected the heavens. It would have affected the universe. So we're going to probably see uh, a lot of astrological events during uh, the divine judgment of God. And, of course, God is guiding this himself. These are specific. It's not just some random events. Uh, these are uh, set in place by an almighty God. So we have uh, now this one, this great star falling from heaven, again burning, and it falls on a third of the rivers and the spring water. So now we have the fresh water affected, uh, the drinking water. Uh, in the second trumpet, we had the sea waters, uh, the salt waters, those that was basically used for movements of ships and, of course, uh, sea animals and sea life there. But now we get our drinking water. Uh, our fresh water is going to be uh, judged upon. And in verse 11, it says, The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters become Wormwood. And many died from the waters because it was made bitter. Wormwood is a better herb uh, that was more uh, active in the past, but it still exists today. And whenever wormwood is introduced to a liquid, it does exactly what we read here. It makes it very bitter. In fact, it's so bitter it can't be consumed. Uh, it makes you instantaneously sick. A lot of times... Wormwood was used even in like a medication to instigate vomiting. Uh, if someone had an ill stomach or they thought they were possibly poisoned, it was given uh, for that reason to make the person kind of vomit out what was making them sick. Uh, so we see now that our drinking water is going to be almost gone, a third of it is going to be polluted, is going to be to the point where it can no longer be used. So now we're going to suffer animal and human death uh, because there won't be enough fresh water uh, to go around. So, fourth trumpet, verse 12. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So now, again, with all these astrological events that are being put in place by God, we lose a third of daylight and the moon at night. So we're losing significant amount of light. <laughs> the world at this time is almost literally living in darkness. Uh, the stars are there, and again, the world is starting to live in darkness. And it's the judgments. Remember, who is our light? Christ is. So this is an instigation by God saying... Here's the dark, but you need to look to the light. God will still save people during this time. This isn't the last chance. Well, it's the last chance, but this isn't like you have no choice. Uh, they do. They can still be saved during this time. So this judgment... These astrological events are trying to get people's attention. People are going to remember, uh, maybe even things like this broadcast here, that, hey, I heard about this at one point in time. When my friend drug me to church, or when my friend was talking about these events, or I heard it because this person shared this and I listened to it one day. I remember them talking about this, and now I see all this happening, um, and they're going to turn to Christ. They're going to open up Bibles. They're going to find them. They're going to do, they're going to talk to those that are saved. They'll listen to those evangelists that God has sealed uh, during this time, and they'll turn to Christ. 
So again, I know it sounds harsh, and it is. It's the judgment of God. It's the perfect judgment of God. He's mighty, and he's strong. He's no one to be laughed at and tried with. He's the most powerful, most awesome. But then again, we have to remember he's the most loving God there is. Because he's doing this to get people's attention, to turn to him. And that's what needs to happen. And then the chapter ends with the verse 13. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. That's a sobering way to finish the chapter, saying, this was rough, but you haven't seen anything yet. So we need to understand that again, while these judgments are harsh, they're trying to get people's attention to turn to the Lord. So that's Revelation chapter 8. We'll pick up uh, Revelation 9 in the next broadcast, which we have uh, a new character well, not a really a new character, it's an old character, uh, enter the scene. Uh, not necessarily mentioned by name in the early part of the chapter, but mentioned by name in the middle. And we'll do some study on that. So, I hope you've enjoyed the study. Again, follow us on Facebook and uh, share with your friends. My friends, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. His return is coming soon. His rapture can happen at any day, at any time, in any minute. And I would hate to have the idea and the thought that my friends who may be listening to this right now, I won't get to spend eternity with. If you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, I pray, I beg, that you consider him as your Savior today. 